Curtis Jackson, he broke into the music industry as a multi-platinum rapper in 2002, but now he's broadened that and become an entrepreneur and a philanthropist, is, is getting ready to release another rap mixtape, and he's here today to talk about that and one of his newest ventures, to breaking into the home audio business. Right. Tell me about that. Um, well, SMS Audio is a project I worked on for a while. I, um, I had a... a an experience in that actual category that I hadn't had in any other territory. But I'm happy it happened because I, I had a license agreement that didn't fall through properly. And I, I, I don't want to just put my likeness on products that I don't actually stand behind. Why was it important for you to actually buy into the company? I imagine, once again, you said you had a licensing right. fee. You could have just gotten 7% of 7% fee off of everything that you sold but you wanted to own. Right, it's important to, to be a part of uh the development process. Mm -hmm. And it allows me, you know, input to say yes or no to certain things that we actually create. A lot of people uh coming out with headphones, Dr. Dre and right. Jimmy Iovine just had a, a cash windfall with their How are you going to set yours apart? Well, it's the, the headsets that we launched with have, have a technology that none of those headsets actually have. You know, we use a clear technology as a 16-bit wireless, lawless technology that allows you to move about 50 feet away from the source of music without losing any high-fidelity CD sound quality. So the difference between uh, that and some of the other things that you see are wireless on the actual market is they're utilizing Bluetooth that was... I created for telecommunications and the, the sound quality is a lot less. What's fascinating about you is the fact that, for instance, with the vitamin water deal, right. uh, you took stock to endorse that product and you were basically the guy out there that uh, brought the flavor to the next level. Right, and it changed the way artists feel like they should uh, operate when doing deals through brand extension and opportunities. They, they uh, followed in that and looking for equity ownership in actual companies and moving forward I hope I influence them with the business model that I utilize for SK for Street Kings. It, it's an energy drink and uh, I partner with the United Nations World Food Program to provide a meal through every purchase of the actual drink so it feels good. According to uh, the United Nations numbers, 29,000 people die per day so I started with Africa, obviously that's the biggest issue. And what I got as feedback from some of my actual audiences, you know, people that aren't actually informed, they react immediately like, we hungry here, Fifth. Like, we got people hungry here. Right. And I says, right, but it's not half as bad as that issue is. Right. And uh, what I did with SMS Audio is I partnered with Feed America. So with the purchase of every headset distributed domestically through uh, to SMS, there'll be 250 meals provided for each person. Um, and this is a new model. You're really right. looking at this as kind of a, a, a part of a um, profit, non-profit. Right, it's, it's conscious capitalism. Okay. According to World Bank numbers, 1% of business would alleviate all extreme poverty around the world. But we have to create a template. They have to see successful projects or successful companies that come out that have uh, this type of philanthropy connected to it. Uh, what inspired you to do this, 50? I was traveling in Africa, and while I was out there, I, I saw I saw something that was more extreme than low-income housing. Like I made reference to being from the bottom in my music, and I saw, it's so much harder. They, they live under such harsh circumstances that it made me feel like I should do something. Mm -hmm. And as you, you move forward, um, you're breaking back into the music industry, not right. that you ever left, but you do have uh, a mixtape coming out. Um, it's been harder for not just yourself, but for a lot of artists to sell a million records because of the yeah. new, uh, landscape. What is the solution? Well, they're not, we're not lo losing any interest. There's no loss of interest to quality material, to good music. You know, you, you hear playing in the nightclubs. I, I just mean the digital yeah, downloads. Right, just that factor, now that 70% of the actual music is being consumed online, they have the option to steal it online or to buy it online. Right. So know? how do you fix that? Well, I don't, I don't think you fix it. I think uh, 
well, Sean, Sean Parker has a pretty good idea with Spotify mm -hmm. because uh, he, he's aware of the damage done through Napster. And then he went forward with a model that can actually just stream continue it. to at least have the major corporations, the major record companies feel like it's, they're taking legitimate risk on, on marketing artists. Mm -hmm. Because now you're meeting the, the new artists before the record company does. All they need is a, a camera, and today your, your telephone's a camera. So they, they, after making the music in the studio, they film themselves, wow, it's right on YouTube. So if you can identify with talent, you can hear it early on. They start to develop a following online, and then the record companies come. So we're losing artist development. You know, I get a sense that you were thinking about these concepts, the idea of diversifying, before you actually came into the major record deal. Well, I think this is something that I want to do. You're going to see long haul. I'll be involved in this, this actual company. It's not like something will build up and just get rid of it. Because, I mean, it's, it's exciting to me. Like, being a part of this audio company is also a reflection of my passion for delivering music that sounds well. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and to sit here and, and, and listen to you, you can see the evolution um, from that first mixtape. Yeah, well, about. you know what? The mixtape, this is where I run into every time I have an interview or I go somewhere is you become the music when you launch something. Whatever you said on the song, that's who you are. There's no other references to you when you're a new artist. Right. And because my first, the, the first tape, first effort on uh, Columbia was Power the Dollar and it had aggression in the actual CD, it translated the strongest because it's been the consistent thing. Because I was writing material that reflected the environment that I grew up in. And you were the, da the most dangerous man in the music business. Ever. Because of the environment being that dangerous where I come from. Right. I was interpreted that way and then gradually when the first record came out, Get Rich or Die Trying, and it becomes the largest debut in hip hop album and goes on to sell 12 million copies, a, fo a fool will change something when it's not broke. So I was consistent with that messaging. Mm -hmm. And you know, now I can offer something different and you know, reveal my true intentions in different ways. That's why the Street King Project and SMS Audio, the give back component is, is there. I'm supposed to be the bad guy. So where's the good guys? Where's their, their effort to fix this. Right. And and does does that frustrate you at times? You know, no, no, I just, I just understand of being stigmatized, but then when you look at what you're doing, it's a no There's problem. negative points and positive points. There's points where people don't play with me because of that. And it allows the business to flow a lot easier. You know, the things that they would, you know, do to some people, they just don't bother to do it. They just say I'd rather not, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and as I, I, wa I really watched you closely as you continue to grow, um, do you see yourself becoming a billionaire one day? Yes, but I'm not really focused on it. Because it takes some time. The, qu the question was, do you see yourself doing it? I, 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 I can see myself continuing success. So at what rate? You know, I, I'm just not, like, that's not my focus right now. I felt like after you accomplish enough, I'm already a billionaire compared to where I come from. You know, I, I don't generally see things that I can't have. Like, it's an option. Like, when I look at home in the squares of living, it was just a choice. I could have had that instead of the home that I bought in Connecticut. Or I could have had that car instead of the three cars that I decided to have. So it doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's necessary. And you can have 18 bedrooms, and you're still only going to sleep on one bed. Mm -hmm. You find that out after you have 18 bedrooms because the Very ambition will lead you towards wanting those, you know, the biggest possible things for yourself in life. And when you, one more question here, and when you reach that level and you start to, to move into the world that you moved into as a CEO and a mogul and somebody um, that thinks more about ownership, um, is there another level of lesson? That of, you learn. Of course, you start to think about what you're act genuinely after, and that's happiness. You know, so I'll always pick a new goal and, and move forward in different ways. So, I think ambition is a tunnel that you run through that doesn't end. 
I think it'll always provide new things. Like like Brian, my partner, he's accomplished so much that it was I was lucky to get him. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like capitalist, consumer products, right. Harvard guy. That's right. You see me? Right. I'm. You see, I'm thinking like a Harvard guy. <laughs> Smart enough to go get him. <laughs> You know? Well, you could teach the Harvard guys a few things yourself, I think. Instincts in different places, you know, and, and and just knowing how my actual audience responds to things immediately. It's perfect. All right. Well, we're going to continue to watch you, Curtis Jackson, as you move forward in mm -hmm. this world. And thank you. Make sure you come back to see us, okay? Definitely. And with Curtis Jackson, 50 Cent, I'm Lee Hawkins. We'll see you next time.